Good afternoon, and welcome back to International Intercultural Education Programming. It has been a short break since the end of the fall academic term. We wish everyone at Metropolitan Community College a great start to the winter quarter. Thank you for joining us today to learn about a program that is changing lives just miles to our north in Macy, Nebraska. I also want to thank our panelists who are allowing us to record today's presentation for future on-demand viewing of the public. With a couple, within a couple of weeks, you should be able to view a link to the recording at mccneb.edu slash film lecture. The link will also be on the MCC YouTube page. Check the chat for these addresses. Audience members, your microphones are silenced. You may send questions or concerns to moderator Barbara Velasquez via the chat. I will speak your questions to our panelists after their presentation. Today, we will learn about an innovative outdoor classroom implemented by Omaha, Omaha Nation Public Schools in Macy, Nebraska. Educators teach students about the natural sciences through the lens of native culture history, and traditional ceremonies. Please welcome Superintendent Stacy Hardy, who is going to introduce the overall program and this specific project to us today. Good afternoon. I'm Stacy Hardy, the superintendent here at Omaha Nation Public School. Um, I also have Ricardo Ariza, um, who is our JAG specialist, and Susie French, who is our farm to school director with us. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about our Career Academy that we opened um, just a few, two years ago, um, and how that has kind of tied in with our Farm to School program um, and the, the project we have going there. Okay. So to start out, we'll talk a little bit about the, the demographics um, and where we're located. So we are a public school located on the Omaha Reservation in Macy, Nebraska. As you can see, we've done a lot of development over the last few years. When we look at our population pyramid here in Macy, um, something that's very unique to the reservation um, and the village of Macy is that the, the median age is 18 years old. The life expectancy of the Omaha people um, is not as long as what we would like to see. Um, so the majority of our people are 18 and under. When we look at the poverty rate, the village of Macy has a lot higher poverty rate than the state of Nebraska and the national average, as well as our un unemployment rate is also extremely high. When we look at the average household income, you will see we are significantly lower than the national average and the state average. The typical household, this is interesting, 47% of our households in the village of Macy are um, led by females. Um, only 25% of the households have married couples. 16% um, um, our students live with non-family members and 10% head of household would be a male. This shows the current level of education of the adults in the village of Macy. 40% have some college, 32% have a high school graduate diploma. Um, as you can see, 14% have either anywhere between a ninth grade and 12th grade level of education. 9% have associate's degree, and then you have the bachelor's and less than a ninth grade and the graduate degree that make up a very small portion. When we look at some of these things and we look at our school and um, the success we've had here, uh, a few years ago, we kind of stepped back and redefined what success looked like for our students. The majority of our students don't um, go on to um, a four-year college, don't leave the reservation or oftentimes um, called back to the reservation to help support either some elders in their family or um, other family members. And a lot of that is wrapped around the cultural values as well. So we wanted to look at how are our kids here, how can they be successful? Um, and that is when we really looked at CTE programs and how we could incorporate that into um, our high school and provide our students with um, job skills, that they could leave high school with and be employable in the community to better support their families and community as a whole. This is a video that shows kind of the, the development of our Career Academy that has been open for two years now. Um, I'll let you go ahead and enjoy that and then we'll get back to the presentation. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Stacy Hardy, the superintendent at Omaha Nation Public School. We are located on the Omaha Reservation in Macy, Nebraska. We currently have 624 students. This is the largest enrollment we've had here at Omaha Nation. We serve 100% Native American students. In the spring of 2022, UNPS embarked on a very exciting endeavor to meet the transitional vocational needs of our students and for them to become gainfully employed in order to contribute back to their Native community. Through our strategic planning, we are now able to provide career and technical education for our students. UNPS has built a state-of-the-art facility that against the current Career Academy. Our Career Academy provides all students with a dynamic learning environment with access to quality, individualized instruction and hands-on career experiences to prepare them for life opportunities after high school with the support and integration of their cultural community. The new 38,000 square foot addition provides spacious instructional and laboratory areas that are equipped with modern technology and equipment. After completing the prerequisite courses, our juniors and seniors have the opportunity to choose from six distinct career and technical pathways, including health services, culinary, early childhood, construction, automotive, and entrepreneurial. In addition to the six pathway spaces, we constructed a beautiful new auditorium to not only support our growing fine arts programs, but to provide a space for our community to experience a variety of programs and cultural experiences. Students also have the opportunity to earn dual credits, industry certifications, and on-the-job experiences that will provide them for the world of post-secondary education and or employment. Our health services pathway gives students the opportunity to start on a road towards a future as a certified nursing assistant, med tech, and a variety of other healthcare positions. Students are able to practice hands-on techniques in a modern nursing and medical laboratory space. Uh, my name is Kaysen Harlan. I'm a senior. I was one of the first students to get um, a CNA certification out of the nursing pathway. I grew up like taking care, helping take care of my grandparents, and I really enjoyed that. And then, I don't know, as I got older, I kind of didn't know what I was going to do, but I was like, I should just try it out, and I'm glad I did. Uh, my name is Darius Austin from Buffalo. I'm a junior. The pathway I'm choosing is the culinary pathway. I chose it because I want to learn how to eat or eat healthy and cook healthy and be able to cook meals at my house. And working there, I or because I also work down in the kitchen downstairs too, sometimes, I'm not, they'll have me make burgers, make parfaits, and help make drinks and stuff like coffee. And they help me get to know customers, how to work the register and how to clean and maintain the grills. In the culinary pathway, students can start turning their passion for food into career in the culinary arts field. Our state-of-the-art industrial kitchen is equipped for students to cook, bake, prep, and create a variety of dishes. Courses include studies in food service operations, indigenous and international cuisines, baking, and much more. The culinary pathway works hand-in-hand -hand with our Blue Stem Coffee House and Cafe to provide the first ever coffee house and cafe in the village of Macy. The Blue Stem Coffee House and Cafe offers a variety of beverages and daily breakfast and lunch specials. My name is Teo Sansasi. I am from the Omaha Nation Public School and I am in 10th grade. Um, my pathway in the career the Career Academy is culinary. Why I chose culinary was because ever since I was little, I really liked baking, cooking, anything that had to do in the kitchen, except for dishes, but um, I like to cook, I like to bake mostly, I like to bake cakes, cupcakes, anything that is sweet. And one of my dreams is to either open up a restaurant or open a cafe by myself. The Early Childhood Pathway is partnered with our newly designed infant and toddler childcare classrooms. Students receive hands-on clinical experience interacting with infants and toddlers, learning how to implement critical functional communication skills, and gain a solid understanding of child development. 
This experience will pave the way into the career fields of education, early childhood, and provide a much needed resource for the village of Macy. Uh, my name is Paris Parker. I am a junior and I'm taking the early childhood education pathway. And the reason why I want to take it is because I grew up with like little siblings and little cousins and I just really enjoy being around kids. The construction pathway includes instruction and demonstration of residential and, and commercial construction as well as general repair and maintenance. Today, hands-on trades demand more technical skills. Therefore, our students will gain hands-on experience with professional grade equipment and technology. These modern skilled trades will provide a bright future for our students and community. My name is Steven Alfredo. I'm a junior. Uh, I do construction. Construction, you build, you're learning a lot more on tools, um, blueprint reading. I, very, I like it very much. Uh, other students, I hope they learn a lot more from construction. I like to do construction as I get older. In our automotive pathway, students will learn basic automotive maintenance as well as more advanced skills in the areas of engines, transmissions, brakes, alignments, and more. Students have the opportunity to earn industry certifications that will make them highly employable in the automotive field. My name is Garnet Parker. I'm in auto body pathway and I'm a junior. A couple weeks ago, I was working on brakes and motors. Our entrepreneurship pathway allows students to identify business opportunities and build business strategies. Through a series of courses that include hands-on learning opportunities, students develop knowledge and skill that serve as a springboard for them to start, run, and grow their own business. The entrepreneurial pathway partners with our newly designed Chief Store. The Chief Store is the first retail store in the village of Macy. Our students are highly involved in designing and creating school merchandise, as well as assisting in the day-to-day -day operations of the Chief Store. On behalf of the UNPS staff, students, Board of Education, and community, we are honored to share with you the vision and accomplishments of the Against the Current Career Academy. At UNPS, we believe there is no greater investment than the future of our children. We look forward to the positive impact that the Against the Current Career Academy and its graduates will have on our community. Thank you. The uh, career technical education that we have uh, our practice of teaching skills based on careers to students in middle school, high school, and post-secondary education. Uh, the benefits of this uh, career technical education provides students and adults with the academic and technical skills, knowledge, and training necessary to succeed in future careers and develop skills they will use throughout their careers. Uh, five proven benefits to CTE are one, exploration of real career opportunities, development of career skills, industry credentials and certifications, improved graduation rates, and bridges to future education. CTE provides unique learning opportunities, college credit, and industry certifications. Exploring the pathways is an exciting time for our students. Uh, since spring 2022, students have been offered 131 different site visits to expose them to a variety of occupations and help them narrow down and select a pathway of interest. For 2023-24 school year, we will offer similar opportunities. So one of the things that's very unique about our Career Academy is that um, all the hands-on experience is built within. Um, typically, with a career academy at the high school level, you would see students do internships and go off-site into businesses. Um, so, since Macy is so remote, um, it would be a 40-minute drive just to get students one way to have on-the-site on training. So we are very mindful when we designed the career academy that we built that within the building. And we're also very mindful of how could we give back to the community with some of these pathways um, and bridge that gap between the school and the community. 
So again, the six career pathways that you saw in the video, um, nursing, culinary, construction, early childhood, automotive, and entrepreneurship. With that, we then kind of have some wraparound services that tie back into our career academy. We have a lot of um, local businesses and organizations that partner with us in different areas. Um, I'll let Ricardo talk a little bit about the JAG program. He um, is the JAG specialist that um, serves our students here at Omaha Nation and has a big part of that through the United Way. Um, we partner with Vogue Rehab, the Nebraska Extension, um, NICC, our local community college, um, and several others. Our, our seven acre farm um, is guided by uh, farming and transition specialists along with culture teachers. This uh, program blends traditional and modern farming practices to raise a large variety of organic fruits, vegetables, and traditional Indian corn. This farm provided over 6,000 pounds of fresh produce that was supplied to the community of Macy via the school cafeteria, culinary pathway, blue stem, coffee house, the cafe, senior center, and local farmers markets. Food sovereignty is uh, due to colonization of the Oman tribe was resettled on the reservation land, hence lost many of their traditional farming practices. Um, Food sovereignty to me is the right to eat what we want and choose what we want and not be given to us. Uh, because of our lack of food choices, the government had us on rations and which made us very sick people. So we have a high rate of diabetes, health problems, heart, you know, uh, obesity is huge here. Uh, so this, uh, the seven acre farm is it's um, one way of getting back to our traditional roots and also becoming food sovereign and food secure. Food insecurity, 100% of our students are on free and reduced meals here at the school. And uh, the school provides the breakfast and lunch year round to address the major concern of food insecurity. Food packets are distributed each day upon dismissal. Food accessibility. The village of Macy has been declared a food desert by the USDA. Villages located 30 miles from any full-scale grocery and many residents lack reliable transportation. Uh, the only food source in the village is a small convenience store and most of that food that is in that convenience store is processed food and not healthy for consumption. When we started this journey, we really started it um at the elementary level and have grown it into the high school level. We have a specials rotation in our elementary, um, the outdoor classroom um, that is led by Dr. Brenda Murphy. Um, she is a naturalist and also in conjunction with a Omaha culture teacher. Uh, this next video will show kind of the whole development of how things got started and how we grew into the farm. We're going to go down and we're going to be picking some things. Um, we'll go down that way and look and see what's what's ready for us, okay? And these are sweet potatoes. They're not ready yet. They got beautiful flowers. Yep, this is the path right here. There you go. This is all for you. You know, we're doing this so you guys can learn how to grow things so that, uh, well, you wouldn't have to travel 40 minutes to the grocery store if you could get everything you wanted right here, right? Oh my gosh, <laughs> we got about probably about 40, 50 pounds already, you guys. There's quite a few under there, keep going. Kane, just get them all out. Wherever we go, there's always gonna be something exciting yeah. that we don't know anything about. And you know, especially when you're outside. When you're outside, there's so much to learn. Watch for the puddle. Round the puddle, you can walk on the wood chips. It's okay. Hey, I thought they were gonna be little swimming pool here. That's where we're gonna gather when we gather in big groups. Find a seat. Remember, we find a leaf on the rug. Any leaf you want. 
All right, class, we're going to start um, today by doing our spirit calling song. So everybody want to hold your hand out and I'll pass out the sage. So when we roll that sage up into a ball, give it a smell. You're smelling the spirit of the plant. We sing a song. You guys, and you sing with me, okay? I'm absolutely thrilled about what the school's doing. Just being able to teach about all the things that surround us, our water, our land, all of that, you know, how to protect it, how to become stewards of our lands. These are all important, important things that we need to teach our children. We have our new outdoor classroom. That's a real opportunity for our young ones to start learning about planting and things like that too. There's mushrooms right there. What we're looking for, underneath of the leaves, if you're very careful, just tip them up, you might see a little white egg underneath of there. Look, feel this one, or this one, some of these little ones. Do they smell good? Feel how soft they are. Oh my they're... God, they are like a little tiny blanket. Aren't they? They're really nice. That is a mullein plant, and it's medicine for like when you're sick and you have a cold. Our ancestors used to use it when they were sick, but it's like an old grandpa. Say thank you, grandpa, for giving us medicine. Traditionally, our elders and our ancestors, they dried food after we have the harvest. They would dry food and they would spend a, a, probably a good month or so drying the food and preparing it for winter so it will last them through the whole winter. But because of, of modern day, we have something like this, it's called a food dehydrator. And you remember how those big those squash were? After I dehydrated it, look how small they got. What are those? The squash, that squash. Who, who likes to eat squash? Anybody? See, traditionally, this would be part of our diet. We would eat this all the time. But because of what happened to us in the past, and we, we lost our food sovereignty and our food systems, remember we talk about that all the time, and the food that we eat now, it makes us sick. So part of this class and part of teaching you guys this is that we try to get this food, this healthy food that we've grown on Umaha land by Umaha people back into our diet so that we can be healthy and happy and live a good life and be strong we want, and we can live a long time. So um, I don't know you guys, who's brave enough to try to taste one? Okay, come on. <laughs> you don't have to, just taste it. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good. 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 Good day our, today. This is our fourth grade class, and they help harvest a lot of the vegetables. We had fun, didn't you guys? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So they have questions <laughs> about what's happening with um, the vegetables now. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for harvesting all those beautiful cucumbers and all these vegetables. <laughs> and what we're doing here today is we're setting up a farmer's market. How much are the cucumbers going to be? The cucumbers are um, two for a dollar. Is that a good price? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. You know what? We don't want to price our vegetables so high that the community says, no, I don't want, I don't want to buy those. That's too expensive. We want to make it affordable for everybody. Six dollars. Okay, thank you so much. And so, you know, one of our goals is to grow our food and then serve it in the school kitchen on the salad bar. You know what we've been doing? We've been taking vegetables every week up to the senior center and giving to the senior center. And they are so appreciative of being able to have fresh, organic vegetables. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. As a school, as a team, we're working on this garden project together. The kindergarten planted this corn. 
the kindergarten class last year, and, and then over the summer, the high school students planted the beans and the pumpkins and the squash out here. And we harvested the Indian corn. First thing we look for is the silk and the silk to turn brown. But look, this has no silk coming out of the top. But come up here so I you can see. Over there. You saw one with the brown silk? OK, but this is what those grasshoppers are doing. Each one of these pieces of silk connects to a piece of corn. Now see? Oh, look. Go ahead, break it off. Can you break that? Yep, break it off. Twist it. Good. Now we're going to open it up and show us what's in farther down. Yeah, see, this is the blue corn. So because the silk was gone from the top, these didn't get fertilized, but look, we've got all that. Are you still good? Or okay, not? it's still good. We can still boil it. We can still um, spoon it off and, and save it for corn soup. What we're doing is this is some corn I grew. I planted this corn last spring. I harvested it recently. I brought it into the school, and the, the kids have already prepared it, taken, taken it off the, the cob. And this is a traditional way that our people did the corn, you know. Nowadays, they have big fans and they blow it like that, but what we relied on was the wind. So we would have purposely chose a windy day to do this. There you go. Eventually, after this dries some more, Grandma's going to make a dish, a traditional dish called washonge. It's like a corn, a corn mush dish. And um, when she makes that, we'll come and get you guys so you can help make it. Yeah, and then we'll eat it. It's a real prized food. Yeah. Not too many people make it these we days, so. When we start something, mm. Grandpa Rufus was out here and he blessed the four directions. When we harvested, we took a, a basket of food. It had Indian corn and we presented it to Grandpa Rufus, Grandma Pat, and Grandpa Clifford this morning. On behalf of the uh, staff and the students, we want to express our appreciation for all the wonderful, beautiful teachings that you provided us and, and the prayers that you've provided made, made this possible, made a, a bountiful har harvest. We're honoring you today for helping us. You came and made a prayer for us in the spring before we started planting, and um, we had a wonderful, wonderful season. The students learned a lot, and um, I had a lot of personal growth, respecting Mother Nature, respecting the teachers. I wanna honor you and thank you for being our wisdom keepers and being here for us. Anytime we have a question, you're always there for us. This is one baby step for us in reclaiming our food sovereignty and our food systems back. We're looking forward to next year. Let's walk down this way, say where we're at. Come on, you guys, keep walking. At one time, the Umaha people didn't know poverty. They didn't know hunger. They lived with the land and they, they, were, they sustained themselves from the land. And it was a big part of their culture. And you know that it is because they have a harvest celebration for four days to just celebrate the fact that the, they receive so much from the land and just give their thanks to come together and celebrate that. So we get to be a part of the celebration and it's wonderful. <laughs> People are so uh, excited and happy to see that we're doing something like this, you know, fulfilling a need that we have in our community. This food was grown on Umaha land by Umaha people, and now it's going to go back to them. And it was, it's a, it's a dream come true for me, you know. Today, I thank the Omaha Nation School for giving me this honor to pray for Wakanda. I ask you to bless each and one of that food, the harvest, the garden food, so that we can all be nourished. Hey, Wakanda. Matega, we behold. Um, 
Omaha people have this whole reservation here and lots of land. And I would like to see the children, the, this generation, to grow up and to uh, bring it to fruition where they're creating their, and growing their own food and making their own economy from it, you know, so that they, um, our struggles for the past seven generations is the next seven generations will have hope and happiness in this land, you know. And um, did I say the American dream? Well, we haven't really realized that yet, but we're working towards it. We've created uh, partnerships with the Nebraska Department of Labor and the um, JAG program. I'm, I'm a career special, specialist with JAG, and it's a national organization serving 1.5 million uh, youth nationwide. And uh, we're the first high school in the state of Nebraska to become a offer JAG to our students. And so that, that's a huge honor for us. And so there was, uh, I, I believe today, we have over 24 high schools uh, statewide. So the growth of JAG is taken off incredibly. And that's because of the leadership within the program. When talking with the, the students about our program, it was evident that uh, our students had no uh, job experience. And so we did a, um, a community assessment and we found there's, there was no industry, no jobs. And so we were trying to do uh, resumes with the students. So we ended up doing value-based resumes, uh, values of the Omaha people. Uh, but we knew that based on the students, um, their, their stories, their testimonies, you know, they, they were tired of seeing the obesity, the diabetes. Uh, they were tired of losing their family members at such young age. And, and they said, you know, we need to do something different. And uh, we problem solved and we came up with the idea of uh, growing our own food uh, through uh, by having a farm. But we partnered with the Department of Labor, uh, the Department of uh, Voc Rehab, and we convinced them that um, paying the students uh, a fair wage, $10 an hour, to uh, learn these uh, traditional and uh, contemporary skills of growing food uh, was an important part of the solution. And so we're very, very proud of the partnerships that we've created thus far. So when Ricardo first came to me um, three, four years ago about this project, he had mentioned um, that the kids wanted to start a garden. So mm -hmm. thinking of a garden and its size, I'm a farm girl, so I know what an acre is. Um, he came back a few days later and he's like, well, the tribe gave us seven acres, Miss Hardy. So mm -hmm. I said, Ricardo, that's a little big. Are you sure we want to start that big? Um, but we tackled it and you'll see some of the pictures as we go through this here on how um, much it has developed over the last few years. So these are just some more pictures of the students working um, during the summer, um, employed by the school district and the funding came from, like Ricardo said, Nebraska Department of Labor, Vogue Rehab, um, and then the school district picked up the, the remaining cost. So you can see just on the End of the football field there, that is the seven acre garden. Um, it's kind of a triangular shape within those tree lines. So we have a large plot of vegetables that is now on black fabric. Um, and then we have traditional corn, which takes up three fourths of the rest of the area. Um, we also have an area where they have the pumpkins and some sweet corn and watermelons and squash. It's, it's huge. Um, the black fabric is 11,000 square feet, if you see right under the football field. And that circle thing is our pollinator garden. Um, we just closed out year three, 
So uh, from year one, we realized um, we had no pollinators. So uh, we put in a huge, uh, it's 50 foot in diameter pollinator garden and it uh, attracts many, many, many bees. <laughs> so this kind of shows where we started year one. Um, when we started the garden, the tribe has done a lease for the seven acres with the school district. Um, this land was in set aside for 10 years prior. So no chemical, no weed control, um, no insecticides. Um, so it was pretty rough terrain when we started. Yeah, uh, the us up there in the UTV, we were actually using a, like a rake thing to try to break it down so we could actually come in with tillers a big, um, after we dissed it. So we kind of had some fun with that. But this is, uh, we used hay that was donated to us to control the weeds. Um, otherwise, we weren't being, we weren't able to teach our students uh, anything. All we could do was pull weeds and pull weeds and pull weeds. And that is our beginning. That is our first three sisters plot in the bottom. That had two hundred mounds of uh, Indian corn. This is year one still, and we we wire uh, watered that entire garden with this little bitty sprinkler you hear in the background. <laughs> and a garden hose from the 50 yard line. This is our uh, farmer's market. And mm -hmm. uh, this was a great opportunity to teach students customer service skills, uh, marketing, uh, how to do research and compare, you know, prices and setting prices. But it was a lot of fun because students were involved and, and this is part of our uh, project-based learning as well as work-based learning that students are involved in. And the students take, took great pride in being able to learn how to uh, exchange money in the, the correct way. And uh, as you can see on the bottom right, we were able to teach the students how to can uh, pickles. And they came up with the unique idea of having Kool-Aid pickles, which I had never had in my life, but they were very delicious. And I highly recommend them, and you can buy them at the chief store. So come to me see. Um, at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, we would gather, and uh, students would put on their, their boots and get their hats and their gloves and get ready for the, uh, the work plan to be reviewed. And Susie and I would uh, meet with the students. We'd circle up, and uh, oftentimes we would burn sage and have prayer and get ready for our assignments. Once uh, we broke the students up into groups of five, we would go out and do whatever was necessary for that day, whether it was uh, weeding or uh, planting, uh, going through and making sure that the containers, all the tools were organized. There was always lots of work to be done and uh, we would work until approximately 10 a.m., take our first break. Oftentimes, uh, we'd cut watermelon and enjoy some of the cold watermelon, and then back to work until noon and uh, break for lunch. And then after, uh, after lunch, 1230, we would have educational sessions in the, uh, in the building where students can learn about uh, drone technology. Uh, they learn you know, culture and language, culinary art. Oh, oh artists, there was a local artist um, who came in and helped the students with uh, different art projects. But again, it was uh, six hours of work for the students daily and they were paid every two weeks. And for many of these students, it was their first check uh, that they had ever received and they were quite proud. Uh, we would have to take them to uh, Pender uh, to cash the check. And that would be a 20 minute drive each way. And uh, we would teach the students about saving money and how to uh, take care of all that they earned. But Jordan, none of our students had a bank account or um, had difficulty finding their birth certificate or any type of formal ID. Um, so those are all obstacles that we had to work through and help the students um, if it was 
paying for a new birth certificate so they could have those documents. Um, the district did that and helped them through those um, barriers that we often don't think of, um, but our kids deal with them on a daily basis. And I think one of the biggest challenges for students who didn't have access to their birth certificates, and that that was a huge challenge, but we, we were all able to overcome that. The uh, culinary pathway, uh, this is exciting to take the students into this beautiful, beautiful culinary art uh, facility with state-of-the-art uh, equipment and uh, be able to learn how to uh, process food. Uh, and this, the food was given to the, the Blue Stem Cafe, to the, to the cafeteria, and sold. Uh, this uh, product was sold in the farmer's markets as well. So it's been very powerful for our kids to go from planting the seeds to harvesting the vegetables and bringing them in the building and, um, you know, working with the vegetables and canning them. And, um, you know, they did a lot of baking with the zucchini and different things like that. Mm. Um, we've seen just unbelievable response from our kids and how proud they are of the work they've done and what they're able to give back to our community and the school district. This was year three of us cooking for our community during the um, the annual powwow. So on the on Fridays we always we have been getting assigned to feed the noon meal. And this last year we fed 500 people. All of our students are there. Um, all of our help that comes and uh, they they see, you know, like we actually grew all that food that we are providing to our, our community. And our, our kids served the community. They um, harvested, they prepped it, they cooked it, and they served it from start to finish. We also um, work with the entrepreneurial pathway with selling some of the um, produce. Susie, you want to talk a little bit about this and different things you guys do in the entrepreneurship? Um, in entrepreneurship, we've done we that's where all of our Indian corn that we we harvest and and store now are and that we have for sale. That's where we put it in the chief store now. All of our pickles that are left, we made sauerkraut this year, and we have that for sale in there. We've done um, we dried the peppers when we closed the garden out. All the peppers that were left, I I dried them. We're gonna have uh, red pepper chunk flakes for sale dehydrated apples uh, we've done with our students in the classrooms since it's been winter uh, we've done uh, dream catchers they do beaded earrings beaded necklaces and entrepreneurship in the school cafeteria we're able to use the fresh produce um, this was the first year the state had uh, allowed us to actually have the school district purchase produce from the farm to school program at the same rate in which we would purchase it from outside vendors for our fresh fruits and vegetables grant. Um, so that was pretty um, awesome that we were able to do that and um, basically just recycle things back to support the district and all the initiatives that we're doing. The Kiewit Luminarium uh, is a new $101 million children museum in downtown Omaha on the riverfront. And uh, we were approached by science writers from San Francisco. And they came out and they interviewed our students, the staff, they created a video. And what they wanted is us to uh, help them to put together a, an exhibit um, in the Luminarium for the next uh, permanent exhibit for the next five years. And so uh, we assisted them, we felt it was a a great honor to highlight our program. And I believe there's over 50 exhibits in the building and we're the only uh, high school that's featured uh, outlining the, the high highlights of our project. So the photo on the right-hand side of the screen, that is the um, large display that's in the center of the museum. Um, if you get a chance to go, um, check it out. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a short video there at the museum that you can listen to, but we'll give you a, a little view of that right now. Let's see. We have three acres of Indian corn, green beans, bush beans, Brussels sprout, there's potatoes, watermelon, crookneck squash, 
pumpkins, onions, cabbage, red cabbage, eggplant, 2,000 tomato plants, zucchini, summer squash, acorn squash, cucumbers, 1,500 pepper plants, broccoli, cauliflower, kale. Um, I think that's about it so far. My name is Susan French, and I am the Farm School Director at Omaha Nation Public Schools. I'm in a case of a black shoulder buffalo clan, but our purpose within our clan was to ensure that all the people had food. So me growing organic food to provide to our community and teaching them how to grow it, it fits exactly where I'm supposed to be. I tell the students, we're going to try to be as natural as we can and teach them more about the plant, the purpose, the connection that we have with those plants. Talking to them, singing to them, um, them are all part of our tradition, all of our traditional ways. Ricardo's job is to get them ready for employment and try to find them employment in our community. Well, there is no employment opportunities, and that's what the garden is doing. It's creating jobs for our students. I need some helpers, volunteers. We want to have a say in what we can eat, not, you know, be handed to us by the government to hear this is what you have. That's the whole point of growing this project. The school has like the best idea. We can grow a lot of food and we can get it out to our community. This project moved me because I saw the change. It's amazing to me. Our elders come and stop and talk about what it used to be like, what they remember in our community. I see the future in this project, our tribe's future the impact that it can have on our tribe's health, our kids' work ethic, our kids' ability to adapt to change and, and shift and, you know, pivot. Just because something, there's a barrier, doesn't mean, oh no, we have to stop and seek help. It means, all right guys, let's think outside the box. How can we fix this? So when we look at next steps and um, what our vision is to, to move forward with this project and expand it even more, um, we're looking at building a processing center, the Three Sisters Processing Center, um, and it would be located um, down at our football complex, really close to the garden. So you can see there, um, we kind of have it mapped out that it would be right at the end of the parking lot, right close to the garden, um, which would allow us then to um, bring the produce right into an intake area. Uh, we would take it into a washroom to, to clean it. Um, and then we have a large processing area set up in the design. Um, we would also then have a walk-in freezer and cooler, um, and then a, a market area in which we could sell the, the produce and not have to transport it all the way up to the school. Um, our big vision is to eventually have some greenhouses where we could grow fresh produce all year round, which would allow us then to keep the market open um, all year and sell fresh produce to the community. Um, here's some pictures of the exterior view. Uh, we are looking at doing some solar paneling to help with energy efficiency with the design of the building. Um, and here's just some final renderings of what it will potentially look like. Um, so right now we've worked with architects to design the building. Um, we are still looking for some funding to um, support the overall project, but that's kind of our, our big vision for next steps. And then I think we're ready for any questions. All right, thank you so very much for such in-depth and um, very interesting, beautifully done videos. Um, all this presentation, I think, has uh, given us a really good start here. We do have an audience question asking, is the Blue Stem House Cafe open to the public? Yes, it is. It opens at 7 a.m. Um, so it's, it has a full coffee bar, um, a small menu for breakfast and a small menu for lunch. And then it closes at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 
Um, so yes, it is open to the public. Um, we have a small sitting area. So the vision was for public to come in and order and take food. So um, it wouldn't be like a gathering place here at the school, but um, yet it would be a service to the community. Thank you. And is that Monday through Friday? Yes. Audience, um, if you can look to the chat, I just want to remind you that you can send your questions to moderator Barbara Velasquez, um, and we will get them to the panelists. So in general, what, I don't know how long all of you have been working um, at the Omaha Nation School, but I, I'm curious about what you can see now before and after the Career Academy was established. I've been here five years at Omaha Nation Public School. And I think that this Career Academy um, comes at a time that's so important to our high school students. They're asked every day, you know, what, what are you going to do with your life? And, and many of the students are confused and um, don't know which direction to go. Um, there's the military, there's, you know, a, a few industries uh, in this area, but there, there's not much. And so having uh, the tracks, having the pathways, for the students is a bright spot because it gets them thinking about uh, the opportunities uh, that they can explore. And they may not choose any of the, they may choose one of the six or two of the six uh, and then change their mind later on. But that's the way life is. Uh, you start in one area and you you, you follow your dreams. And, and that's what we want our, our young people to realize is they can accomplish whatever they want to uh, through this career academy. I would also say um, just um, overall, the students have more pride in what we have here at the school. They're very proud of the facility, proud of the programs that we have. Um, they respect the building and the programs. Um, and we've seen nothing but a bright future with this whole project and just the incorporation of the, the farm to school program and how everything ties together and um, everything, you know, circles back around. That's awesome. For anybody who works in any kind of education or a project, um, to see that as quickly as you're seeing it, I think um, I would agree that shows great, great opportunities uh, for the future. Now, it, it may have been missed in your presentation, but who had the vision for this? Where did this Start. I would say the the Career Academy um, probably, I think, came from me. Um, I was at a meeting with some tribal leaders of different programs throughout the tribe several years ago, and uh, there was a comment made that we are graduating students here at Omaha Nation that don't have employable skills, um, and we're basically just pushing them out the door, and um, they can't get back to the community. Um, and that is when I, I started to think and look at the data and really look at the, the trends and how many of our kids um, went on to college, how many were pulled back to the community for family reasons or circumstances that were out of their control. Um, and then looking at the stats with the unemployment rate um, at that time was when the Commissioner of Labor approached me and asked if we would pilot the JAG program, which really fit nicely into, you know, those pre-employment um, soft skills that um, tied with the Career Academy. Um, I went and looked at several different programs. We were very unique in the way we designed it and mindful of how could each pathway give back to the community or give back to the school in some way. Um, and then the Farm to School program, you know, kind of happened shortly after and um, I would say that the JAG program started that with the students' vision of um, growing the produce and giving back to their community, um, something that was of high need um, to make the community healthier. 
Wonderful. This is not a question, but I'm just so excited for the Omaha Nation community, the leadership community involvement, thinking outside the box and finding funding sources and mechanisms to make things happen. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, this presentation is so inspiring. Making learning relevant is vital and you are achieving this. Can you describe more of your language arts and culture program? I think we were very intentional in choosing our culture language teachers, uh, people who would come out and just naturally uh, teach. Uh, and that teaching would take place with the whole group of 30 students or it could take place with one or two students uh, in, in the field. And um, the traditions, the values of the Omaha people uh, were at the core of that teaching. And uh, Susie brought incredible knowledge and skills uh, to, to, the, to the farm. And she would share what, what she, you know, the years of experience that she had and tell, you know, story, this is what we would do, and this is how we would do this, and introduce the kids to, uh, you know, these uh, very uh, dainty young girls who had their nails perfectly done, done that day, and Susie was introducing them to manure tea and <laughs> showing them how to go out and, uh, you know, nurture the plants and... Uh, to be in relationship with plants and to be in relationship with Mother Earth. Those are all, you know, traditional ways that uh, we made sure that our students uh, had access to that knowledge. The Omaha's passed down their traditions through storytelling. So um, it was perfect when we were able to find some um, cultural leaders that were willing to work side by side with our students in the garden and tell those stories. Like Ricardo said, either one-on-one -on -one with a student or, or during, you know, a water break would tell a story to the whole group. Um, but very unique in, in terms of hands-on with the students right out the field. Sometimes the uh, elders from the community would come and bring their lawn chair and sit down and begin to talk about how things were done a uh, long, long time ago. And, and that teaching was, was beautiful. And many times uh, the students would hear the, the statement that uh, they were the they were the answer uh, they were the answer of the prayers of the ancestors. The ancestors would pray for this day that the young people would take responsibility and, and, and help the community in this way. And I know the kids walked away feeling very, very proud of that. Marvelous. I can imagine that the adults working on the projects are learning day by day also. Um, so I believe there was a part where um, they were in the video, students were outside and um, I'm sorry, I don't remember who was saying something, but I think they were describing the practice of planting certain plants together because it just made sense with um, weed control, et cetera. Is that something maybe Susie can explain to our audience? Um, we, we do plant up three sisters together. That's a traditional um, Native American thing with the corn, beans, and squash. The, you know, the beans grow up the corn and squash covers the ground. Um, to keep it less weeding. And then they also put the beans with the nitrates back in the soil, nitrogen back in the soil. Um, so we, we do touch on that with our kids um, of how we used to grow it a hundred years ago. Um, and I did research that before I did it with how the Omaha's did it and explain it to them. I did it a couple of years with some elders in our community and um, it didn't work out so well. It kind of looked like a bunch of little great little things out there so we changed it up a little and yeah we do touch base with our history as much as I can and our language is everything out there has our Omaha word underneath it what you know so we do that a lot with them 
So every vegetable that has, has that Omaha word underneath it to how to say it. Excellent. Thank you. And I think Ricardo mentioned to me once about Indian corn sales. Can somebody tell us what Indian corn is, how it's used, and what a quart of Indian corn sells for? Indian corn is, uh, just, it's a flint corn, and it depends on what tribe you're from here. The Omaha's like to use, there's, you know, some of them use blue corn, some of them use white corn. Um, just depends on how, uh, el how elder you are, I guess. I chose a uh, multicolored flint corn to be grown here at the school. And uh, I did that because it was, for me, I, every time I open up a, a shuck of corn, the color is something that I just fall in love with. So I wanted to share that with our students. And we um, pick, we hand pick it. So it's three acres out there. We hand pick it and then we bring it back. We shuck it, we blanch it in this great big, huge boiling water pot. And then once it cools, we spoon it off. So we get the heart of the kernel and it's a traditional food. So we dry it on screens with a fan until it's completely dry. And then uh, usually they would put it in corn soup. And over the years, back in the day, it was a staple. Over the years, it became less and less available to us. And so it's now a uh, something they only use in uh, ceremonies or they only get to use it at birthday parties or, or whatnot. So one of our goals is to make it affordable and affordable and also very easily to get. So we sell it out of our chief store. It's $35 a quart. Um, a lot of work goes into that court and our students are right out there with us. Um, so doing this, it is very, very um, labor intensive, the, the Indian corn harvest, but it's very traditional. Thank you, Susie, appreciate that. The processing center that's uh, in the future, um, I, I noticed the solar capabilities. I'm guessing that there are probably some awesome lessons for the students about sustainability once that processing center is set up. Are there any thoughts on that, like practices to keep the environment clean from processing waste? Well, we, we are doing composting. Um, right now, but also from year one to year three, which we just, we just ended year three in the garden of the garden. Um, year one, we did, I don't know how many case or pellets of bottled water. In year three, we did probably less than a pellet of bottled water. Everybody had their own water bottles um, and we provided coolers with water out there. So we are, are, are teaching them slowly about waste and making sure that we can sustain it and also about using things that are environmentally safe. And this uh, summer, we partnered with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and they came out with uh, drones and they showed the students how to fly the drones and surveyed the land. And they were able to put in these um, Water. Water. Soil measurements. Yeah, so, yeah, moisture. moisture measuring. And so we could access um, the moisture of the soil through this application. And so uh, creating those opportunities to do, to use technology uh, is an important lesson. And I believe we could ask any one of our university partners in the future to come out and help us with uh, the uh, solar technology and how we can grow that uh, to, so that it's sustainable on our farm. I knew you'd have that um, in place, just needed to give you the opportunity to share that with us. Um, I wanted to also comment that I absolutely love the connection you make to the harvest celebration and the probably increasing involvement um, that you have in in keeping all of those traditions going and helping 
your kids to understand that it's not just a big party, really. I mean, it's it's a celebration, absolutely. It's a get together, but but there's history um, there and it can go back to what you're teaching them. So thank you for doing that. Um, so I suspect that some of our viewers would like to support or follow what you're doing. How do you recommend that they continue to learn more about your projects and what might they do to support? Yes. Uh, so we have put a link directly on our website, umpsk-12.org, um, that goes to our farm to school program. You can see it over here on the right. That goes directly to one of our pages here that will have updates, updated photos, updated information. This was based off of our latest um, flyer about information on programs, where our funded funding currently stands. And to directly support, we have uh, a couple buttons on the page. You can see, click here to support Three Sisters Farm. This goes to uh, a Cheddar Up page, which is uh, pretty much an equivalent to kind of GoFundMe or other familiar things that you can use to directly support um, uh, items for student workers, just open donation, uh, money for the food processing, processing center, farm equipment, uh, different applications for that. So that is all directly off of our website again, unpsk-12.org. And you can find this button for our uh, farm school program. Okay, so. That that helps a lot. So we're going to, um, first of all, thank you tremendously for what you've offered today. But I'd like to end with, um, we entitled this presentation Harvesting Hope. So for each of you related to the projects that have been described, what is your hope for the project itself, the youth involved, and the larger community? For me, the uh, for the youth, for them to realize uh, their potential and to follow their dreams and find a way to uh, give back to their community in a meaningful way, I think those are those are my goals, or those that, that's what moves me. And uh, each day that I'm down there in the farm. Uh, there's incredible beauty down there, the, the natural beauty that you experience. Uh, just it's undescribable uh, because you see the the transformation of the plants, and uh, it, it uh, it's heartwarming. And for our students to be excited about it, that's what motivates me. My hope is that uh, I will be bring, I will be uh, creating farmers. I am Omaha. I grew up here. I know um, I am a farmer. I, you know I'm an agricultural producer outside of this, and I know the ability and the capabilities of our own land. We don't use as a people, and and I'm not just saying that they can be farmers. There are so many agricultural positions out there that are available. And I want them to have the opportunity to do that, to learn livestock, plants, food. You know, I, I see the future here. It, it's, it's, we have an endless future of changing our own future here, opportunity. I would say for me, just the opportunity for the students and um, the vision that um, we have, that they now have um, in making, you know, the village a better place for them to, you know, raise their families and have that um, security of fresh fruits and vegetables and be able to provide to the community. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We, I trust that many of us in this audience are there with you, um, keeping you in our, um, our hopes for the future. And we'll want to, to have that opportunity to follow what you continue to do. Um, everybody, I know, I want to tell you, too, that um, this team doesn't just present locally. They are out there letting people know across the nation um, 
what's going on um, here in Macy, Nebraska. And we are so thankful for the work that you're doing. I really can't articulate it, but you began and you continue to make the outdoor classroom a reality for students. Um, we're so impressed and honored that you took the time. I know you're very busy. Thank you very much for taking this time with us. And also thank you for allowing us to record. Thank you. Thank you. So now um, we have an evaluation. We appreciate your taking the time to do that so we can get feedback to our panelists. And then we want to remind you that there's several programs coming up. I was able to get one in the chat. The rest of them will be emailed to you. Um, next week on December 13th, we are celebrating our 16th annual Diversity Matters book series with the presentation of Brown Boy. Brown Boy. Um, it is about a Pakistani American living in Canada. And we're so excited that I... Metropolitan Community College graduate, Nashad Mastafa, who's a, an international teacher. He's been teaching around the world. He's now in a very remote lo location in Alberta, Canada, and he will be sharing with us a little about his experiences at, in comparison with what you learn in Brown Boy. That's next Wednesday, December 13th at 3 p.m. CST. Also, we have in January, January 4th, it's a great time to grab these books, but you do not have to read them to come to the presentation. The title of the next one is A Most Tolerant Little Town by Rachel Louise Martin. Can you tell we know that this is a good time to read so we pack in some of our discussions? For those of you who know Tulani Grundy Meadows, who's a human relations political science instructor at Metro, um, you will enjoy her sharing with us about this um, book from 10 to 11 a.m. on January 4th. And then it's our 39th annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration scheduled for Wednesday, January 10th from 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. CST. This is hybrid. You could join us by Zoom at no cost. If you come to the luncheon, we need $20 because that's gonna pay for a marvelous lunch uh, by the Institute for the Culinary Arts. And our keynote speaker, we are, very honored to have Reuben Shelton III, Esquire, who um, is joining us from St. He's going to be coming in from St. Louis and it'll be a great day. So if anybody has any questions, you know how to reach me. I wanna thank our panelists once again, and we look forward to seeing everybody next week and into the future.